Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about the difference between an IPS and a WAF. Uh, an IPS is a, an intrusion prevention system, and a WAF is a web application firewall. So I'll draw just a really quick representation up here. You have, uh, you have a client who wants to access your web application. So client over here, web app over here, and then you put the uh, security you know, solution in the middle. So maybe this is an IPS or maybe this is a, a web application firewall. So as a client requests your application, it's gonna come through one of these security products uh, and then this, one of these things is gonna check it uh, before it you know, allows access to your web application. So uh, again, the question is, you know, what's the difference between the IPS and the WAF? Uh, a couple of things I'll note about an IPS intrusion prevention system. These are very typically signature based, so I'll say SIG based. And, uh, and with signature based products, um, the signatures are going to check for well-known vulnerabilities, uh, well-known attack vectors, that kind of thing. So if something's out there in the wild already, uh, then it'll you know, take its signatures and it will um, you know, check it against that request. And if it matches, then it's gonna block um, if it matches a, a threat or a vulnerability, it's going to block that, and if it doesn't, then it's going to let it on through. Uh, the signature database, this database of all these different known signatures, uh, is typically going to grow over time, which you kind of want it to because it's, uh, you know, it's checking for anything and everything out there that it should. Um, as these things grow, it could affect performance in the sense that any request that comes into the IPS is going to need to be checked against all the different signatures that it has. So you got to keep kind of got to keep that in mind as um, as you look at signature based um, products or or certainly things that are that are strictly signature based. Uh, so that's one thing. One another thing that I'm going to put is um, is no awareness of awareness of um, of a session or uh, say user. So. What I mean by that is it doesn't necessarily know, the IPS doesn't necessarily know which user specifically is requesting access to your web application. Uh, so it's not going to be able to track like, hey, this is the session for that specific user, or hey, I know that user maybe from a previous request or whatever, um, and then it's going to be able to track or make decisions based on you know, that specific session or that specific user. It's just simply going to say, is this a valid request, uh, regardless of who it's from, if it's valid, let's let it through. If it's not valid based on, you know, some of the signatures and all that, then it's going to block it. So it does a, it, you know, it does a good job of, of uh, blocking the request based on known signatures. This is a, uh, what I'll call maybe a wider focused, um, you know, security product, uh, as it were, in the sense that it's not really going to be able to dive deep into, you know, this is the, the very specific uh, user request to this very specific application or this very specific service that you're trying to provide. Um, it's just going to take a wider focus and say, you know, is, is any request at all, regardless of who it's from, regardless of where it's going to, does it match my criteria or not? And then it's going to take action based on that. Okay, so that's kind of a very brief overview of, of uh, IPS. A WAF is a web application firewall. This thing is, uh, is typically user and session, and I'm gonna even put uh, application aware, app aware. And basically what I mean by that is this typically a WAF, and, and I, I can talk about the F5 WAF, uh, which by the way, our F5 WAF is the ASM, Application Security Manager, or we have a new advanced WAF. Um, both WAFs from F5, and these things uh, are going to be able to track uh, each session, each client, or each, each user, I should say, that's uh, requesting access to your web application. Beyond that, it's going to be, be very aware of, a, of the web applications behind it that it is protecting. You know, what are they built out of? Uh, what are they looking to do? What services do they offer? All of those different things. And so because of that intelligence that's built in, it can make uh, a little bit more intelligent decisions based on the request that comes in. So, um, so it's very important for it to be, uh, or that it is application aware, user session aware. Um, the WAFs in general, so going back to s sort of a general uh, view of WAFs, are built, uh, I'll, I'll say primarily, or built to defend against this OWASP 
top 10 list. All right, the OWASP top 10 is a, uh, the top 10 um, list of security risks that are out there in the internet today. It's based on uh, various things that the OWASP organization does surveys and other things to figure out, hey, what are the top 10 security risks that we collectively face uh, in the world today? And they make a list of the top 10. These are things like injection attacks, cross-site scripting, um, you know, there's a new one, uh, insecure deserialization is on the list. There's, a, there's, there's 10 of them. Um, so anyway, WAFs are traditionally built in order to protect against these top 10 security risks. Uh, so that's, uh, that's one of the things that the, that the WAF does. Um, the F5 WAF specifically has some really cool things like proactive bot defense. I'll just put a couple of uh, things here. PBD, proactive bot defense, uh, credential, credential protection, um, and then I'll also list uh, IP, I'm going to say IPI, that's IP intelligence. These, without going into the details of all those things, uh, these are some very sophisticated bot de, uh, defense mechanisms. Uh, credential stuffing or credential theft is a big deal today, and there's protections built into um, to the WAF on uh, the F5 side, and then this IP intelligence as well. We Basically, the idea is we, uh, we can track the IP addresses that are out there in the world, and if one is known to be bad, then we'll know that, you know, and if, if a request comes in from one of those bad ones, we can take action on that. Okay, so that's, that is a very high overview of kind of the WAF, but one of the, one of the things I wanted to highlight as well today is the protocol support. So I'm going to put uh, protocol support that a WAF is going to give you, um, maybe that's beyond what an IPS would be able to do. So, of course, we look at HTTP traffic. So I'm just going to list some of the protocols here. HTTP and then, of course, HTTPS um, traffic. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's, you know, most of the web traffic that we see today, or most of the traffic we see today is web, it's HTTP, HTTPS, it's port 80, it's all that stuff, right? So that's the primary uh, focus on a lot of our traffic that we need to look at to protect. But beyond that, there are certainly threats and problems that could happen outside of just the, that protocol or, or those protocols. Um, so things like FTP, um, while not used maybe as much as HTTP, it's still a potential problem. So one of the things that the WAF can do is look for things like port scanning, um, anonymous requests that come in via an FTP request, uh, command line length, um, you know, of, uh, limits that would be put on those uh, or on an FTP request, uh, excessive logins that might come in via FTP request. So it can look at things uh, from an FTP protocol specific perspective to, uh, to, guard, to guard your web applications or guard your network, frankly, from some of these what would be malicious FTP, uh, you know, or would be malicious FTP traffic. So, uh, so it's very important to have protocol support beyond just HTTP. Another one that I'll just mention here, uh, SMTP, this is our email stuff. Um, the, uh, the WAF can do things like validate incoming and outgoing email. It can, it can check uh, for viruses on, on the email itself or maybe an attachment has a problem with it. It can, you know, it can, uh, it can get into the SMTP request and check for things like that. Um, it can do things like rate limit, the number of messages that come in. So let's say someone tries to just overwhelm your, your email inbox, your email server with just tons and tons of just junk emails. Uh, it can rate limit that. It can do things like disallow or even allow uh, certain, uh, certain methods or certain requests uh, from an SMTP protocol perspective. So there's some security built in or there's some configurability built in around the SMTP protocol specifically. Um, Another one that I'll list here is DNS. So the DNS protocol, the domain name system, um, is of course where you type in a web address and it translates it to an IP address and just that whole thing. Uh, we've got a lot of Lightboard lessons on that if you want to check it out. Uh, but things that, one of the interesting things about DNS is that if an attacker comes in to try to attack your web application or, or your network, uh, let's say, then you know, it'll launch all different kinds of attacks. Uh, and one of the things that, that some attackers will try to do is they'll try to somehow get a malicious payload into your network via any number of ways, you know, whether it's an email or a, a link that someone clicks on or whatever. 
Um, but a lot of times when that malicious payload enters your network, uh, it by itself sometimes can do a lot of damage, of course, but a lot of times it's going to need to it's going to need to phone back to a command and control node or a command and control center, as it were, in order to download updates or download even more malware. And so when it does that, there is this there's this idea that you internally need to be checking requests that go from inside your network back out to what would be one of these command and control nodes. Well, a lot of times this this malware will look for open ports on your network. And certainly HTTP is open, HTTPS, this is 80, 443, uh, but those are very closely monitored for stuff like this. One that is not quite as closely monitored is DNS, port 53. And so one of the things that our, our WAF and, and maybe other WAFs as well can do is they can log requests from DNS, and ours specifically can do per request DNS logging, uh, which is really cool so that you can, so that you can keep a very close eye on what would be a callback to a command and control, um, you know, malware node, as it were. So you can uh, you can you know look for that DNS uh, exfiltration or that DNS callback action, um, which could be very problematic for your network, and you want to be able to protect against that. So you know, so as we look at the as we look at the uh, the protocol support around a WAF, it is it's much more it's much more um, uh, robust than anything that an IPS would do. So while an IPS is not inherently a bad thing, it's gonna it's gonna block malicious traffic from accessing your web application. Um, a WAF is gonna dig much deeper and much broader in terms of protocol support um, for uh, for what it will give you to keep your web application secure. So uh, so anyway, so I hope you've learned a couple of things here on some of the differences. This is by no means an exhaustive discussion over IPS or WAF, but I wanted to get into a few things and then, and then really highlight this protocol support. So, so hey man, if you've liked this Lightboard lesson, uh, you can click up here uh, on our DC ball and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we will see you guys out there in the community.